Hey everyone, this is Matt. We are playing From Dust today. It just came out on Steam uh, today, I think, yeah. Um, I've played it before over on uh, Xbox Live Arcade. I really enjoyed it. It's got a very quaint, very uh, unique style to it. Um, it kind of reminds me of games like Populous and things like that, other godlike games, but it's very good. Uh, big shout out to Graloth, uh, our server admin. He website extraordinaire. He does lots of stuff for us uh, for gifting me this game on Steam a few weeks back. Uh, he said make a video about it. So here we go. This is uh, Matt Sucks at Games from Dust. Uh, I'll play it for a couple of levels, I think. I kind of know the length of it. So um, I'll kind of talk about the actual port uh, first off. Um, you've got things like common options uh, where you can turn off and you can play in quiet mode. Um, or you can turn it off. You don't have a slider to control the volume, which is very particular. Peculiar. Um, quiet mode doesn't really do much. It just lowers the volume, as you guys can hear. It's slightly less loud than before. You got the display options. Um, you can choose your graphics card, blah blah blah, and uh, your adapter. I think the adapter is because I have two graphics cards. But anyway, um, full screen and refresh rate, all that kind of stuff. Um, controls. You can uh, use your mouse like I'm doing. I can use your gamepad. I'm pretty sure. The 360 controller is probably supported as it was a uh, 360 game. The port isn't awful. I'd just probably like a little bit more options in here. Like maybe to control anti-aliasing, uh, control like graphical settings, uh, textures, and uh, the sound, the overall sound. But, you know. Uh, anyway, let's uh, start a new story here. And let's have a look. It definitely looks a little better on... Uh, PC than it did on 360. It's a little bit more like graphically better, as you'd probably imagine. Um, but it's not hugely different. I mean, on my big screen TV, I mean, it looked pretty damn good. So this is not that far away from it. It's a little bit cleaner, a little bit uh, higher def in some places. But I mean, it's not a huge leap from the Xbox version that was released uh, a few weeks back. So, very good music to start off with, and it looks very pretty, um, with this uh, opening cutscene here with this slow pan. It's kind of reminded me of Lost when it th went through the letters before. But anyway, going into the darkness here, ooh, and then just cut off of music, brilliant. So here we go, frame rate's holding up pretty good, um, which is a, a good thing, um, especially with that kind of graphics. Ooh. Yeah, it's not English. As I found out <laughs> on the uh, Space Pirates and uh, Zombies video, when I talked over TV, it was almost impossible to hear either of us, so I will try to be a little bit quieter when uh, other loud things are going on. But I uh, hold uh, this down here, and here we go. It's going to start growing. Ooh, look at that. Very cool tribal music kicks in here. I like it. If uh, you pre-ordered this game, you actually got one of the masks they're wearing for uh, TF2. Uh, same with a lot of games like Sk Skyrim. Skyrim, what the hell Skyrim? I got you one, um, and Rage. I've got all of them, yet I don't play TF2 that often. Uh, I think I just pre-ordered them for the reason of them being awesome games. Um, I need to play some more Oblivion again, actually. Um, I'm just a little bit addicted to Fallout New Vegas right now. C'était <laughs> là very nice I like I like the, the voice actor whoever they got to uh, do this oh my god um okay so this looks a lot more familiar than before so move the breath and control the camera with the mouse well it's very well let's rotate uh, left control to close okay um, how do I pick up dirt and stuff? Is it going to let me yet? I don't think so. I can just move this around for now. And uh, you can actually uh, look at one of these guys. I don't know if it's going to let me yet. So you can zoom out. Uh, press F to get a closer look at someone. So here we go. You can hold F. 
You can see the little guys running along. A little kind of spazzy out animation there, but there we go. That looks better. I mean, that looks pretty good as well. Um, I like how the graphics look from this kind of level. I mean, even if you zoom in, the water is absolutely fantastic. Oh, uh, help them pass the passage. And that is the little, little sign saying that they're in trouble. So we've got to help them across here. So uh, let's get back across there. Right, so uh, left click and we can collect stuff up. Takes it from the ground and pulls it up into uh, a ball. And uh, place it down. And there we go. And pick some more up. Collect some more bits and bobs here. And uh, just drop it down. You're just kind of like slowly tapping the right mouse button kind of like builds this land up a little bit and as you can see they got across fairly easily there um, they say they're having a little bit of trouble getting across here yet there is another route they could have taken anyway the AI can be a little dumb like that at times but I mean it kind of makes sense for the kind of native tribes that you're controlling just for this I mean it's not the overly most complex characters that they needed to uh, kind of uh, program is it so we go we've got all our people in gate in game well, or the gate whatever you press the space bar and uh, we get another cutscene that was basically the first level to kind of teach you uh, basically controls rather than the the full-on mechanics of the game it just touches on that so here we go a little wander through the caves here this is kind of like the generic loading screen between levels as well um, these kind of cave walking things, but I mean it looks very good. I mean, it's very pretty yeah, The colors are very unique and things like that and here we go. This is the Obviously in-game kind of reveal of what level we're at And again, like I said the frame rate's holding up very nicely And yeah, and there we go the ritual akita. <laughs> Orang zamani te la menubu se bo atiang saman kita bermai sherer kijiji. Okay, so around the totem, we've got to create a village basically. Uh, right, so we can go over to the uh, the totem here and press space bar, and that's going to bring them across. But clearly, they aren't going to be able to get across uh, because of the water. So now, one of the things I really liked about this game is that very quickly you will realize that this game is not just about you know saving some villagers and getting them across places it's about surviving natural disasters and it gets crazy like oh my god crazy like so these totems on other levels will actually give you the ability to uh, control the elements and kind of protect yourself from uh, these tidal waves or these volcanic showers or you may even want to um, get some totems that stop the water and then you can manipulate the water in a way so that people can pass kind of like being able to control like just separate the water in an area so people can run along the seabed and then up to the other side I and mean, things like that are, you know it's very cool another thing about this game is the art style is very much its own own thing it's very unique and not many games kind of do anything like this and here you go you can see um, you've got the one, two, three, four thing. So if we went to one, at, and then we hit four, oh, isn't going to do it. I guess you have to wait until you get it. But you can actually use um, one, two, three, and four to skip between uh, things. Uh, I think the numpad works as well. Let me see. It does not. The numpad does not work for those. I can confirm that live. So you can actually pick up water as well. So here we go. We'll scoop all this water up, and we've got a big blodgety wall of uh, ball of water, and you can drop that wherever, and it sinks down beautifully. Um, got a little bit more water in here still. We'll scoop all that up until it's all nice and dry in there, and uh, there we go. Now, if we press space bar on uh, this thing, it's going to call some guys over. But again, we actually don't have any sort of way to get them across yet. So we've got to build a way, just like before. I'm not a huge fan of the the kind of mouse movements. It feels very much like a controller joystick, uh, or analog stick, I should say. Um, so, I mean, that it's a little bit like if you move 
too close to the edges, it starts moving. And I feel like, you know, with RTS games on the PC, you can go all the way to the edge before it starts moving. And I feel like the, the actual area is pretty small. Maybe that's a resolution thing, because I'm playing it on uh, 1920 by 1080 but I'm not sure. Um, so, yeah. So here we go. We can uh, build this land up a little bit here. And uh, there we go. It gets populated. Go up here. Uh, we want some people to go pick this up, so we'll send a guy up to go get that. And in global view, you can actually press tab, and it does this really nice cinematic look. And, uh, yeah, it looks good. So it's basically giving me a little view here saying that we've uh, vegetated the land, which is good. And uh, we've unlocked a new story from Memory of the Tribe. Now we can go see that on the escape menu here, or the start menu, however you want to call it. And uh, you can see we've got a lot of things. And it teaches you little things about things. <laughs> teaches you things about things, that's it. Really. It's, it's very, very cool though. And uh, again, we had a guy coming up here, didn't we? I think he's still growing, coming up. Let's zoom in and have a look at the land. Let's see if we can see them. Here we go. He's walking along through the brush. Uh, is this a, a woman? I think this is a lady. I don't think you can rotate the camera or anything. You are pretty much fixated on this one view. Um, yeah. Um, she's a little looks a little lost, if you ask me. Oh, I think someone else might be already here. Here we go. So he's going to crouch down at this little uh, memory thing and we pick it up. And there we go. And that obviously unlocks another one. And uh, you can press tab and that brings you really close in or tab to zoom all the way out. Which is a nice little feature uh, to be able to zoom all the way in like this or all the way out. I mean it's very cool. Alright so we've got all the totems now and uh, the passage is open so we can actually go across. So we will. We'll uh, make our way across to the uh, the next level. Let's press this little uh, thing here. And uh, unfortunately, we don't have enough... There isn't any land there to let our guys across. So we better actually make some. So let's drop some land there and drop a little bit more there. And pick a little bit more up. Now, I will start... I'll talk about some things I've already read online. People complaining about the options being a problem. But as a game, as a PC game, it's running very, very well. And you know, other than the options not being as fully fledged as maybe we would have liked to see from a PC version of this game, it's still pretty damn well done. I mean, it feels like a well done console port. I mean, if you guys have played Dark Siders on PC, I thought that was a pretty well done console port. So, I mean, Halo PC is probably one of my favourite console ports of like all time and obviously this doesn't come close to the kind of depth that Gearbox added to uh, Halo uh, to the PC but I mean it still works as a game that was a small little downloadable game on Xbox Live added to Steam it works like that and I mean I think it's gonna reach an even wider audience now which is a good thing and obviously you guys can pick this up on Steam right now. I'm not exactly sure how much it is. Um, but I'm pretty sure it'll be in your new releases. Or it'll be on the little banner uh, on the front page of Steam. The little cycle banner that you can go through. So we'll uh, we'll play one more level I think here. Of From Dust. I can't remember for the life of me who made it. I know it's a good company who made it. They're a good team. But I know Ubisoft publish it. And it comes with this kind of ugly packaged Ubisoft thing. Okay, so this is a very interesting uh, level to show you guys, so I'm glad we've actually got to this one. So let's uh, let's build our first village here, and I'll talk a little bit more about this ugly Ubisoft thing that comes packaged with the game. So when you boot it up, it first asks you to put your CD key in, which is easy on Steam, you can right click copy CD key, copy to clipboard, and then paste it in there. But then it takes you to this kind of like splash page of news to do with Uplay. Now, Uplay is this new thing that Ubisoft have been trying to implement in all of their games for a long time now. I mean, it was in Splinter Cell Conviction, it was in Assassin's Creed. It's been in a lot of their bigger games, and they're now trying to implement it in a lot of other things as well, so you can get 
you play points to buy other things. And I mean, it's kind of a good idea, but doesn't really work that well. So, unfortunately, this game is packaged with that. Anyway, let's go back to From Dust, and let's see what's going on. So, we thought the valley is safe, but the shaman has listened to the crash of the breaking waves and sensed a danger of a tsunami. We must bring knowledge of Repel Water back to the village before the danger arrives. So, the Repel Water is one of the uh, little spells slash, like, control the elements, uh, things this game has that I was telling you guys about. So let's take a look at that first. So we can rotate around here obviously, but let's zoom all the way out, speed all the way up here. Uh, I find moving around a lot easier with WASD um, than really the mouse button and then kind of just moving with it uh, once it's there. It's a lot faster than the analog stick on the 360 was. Now the thing I found about this level when I was playing on the 360 is that you have to be very careful about where you go and what you do because the water levels in this level are going to rise very quickly as the tsunami approaches within the next three minutes. Um, so I am trying to sort this out a little bit here so then this guy can get back across because this uh, sandbank I've made is going to flood very easily. So. I mean, I feel like it runs smoother than it does on the Xbox as well, which is always a good thing. Uh, I mean, the Xbox is a dating console now. It's been out for years, but yet still developers manage to push such good-looking games onto it. So I look forward to uh, seeing more from that, obviously. But this game looked very good on the 360, and I must say I'm impressed with a lot of the things uh, on this year's Summer Arcade, such as uh, Bastion and... Uh, Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet, they were great, great games. Um, Bastion's hilarious because you get like a narrator, a narrator? A narrator kind of uh, narrating every single thing you do. And it's a very unique way of uh, kind of doing that. I saw a really cool video over at IGN of uh, kind of a spoof of that where uh, Damon was literally just getting everything he did in his life uh, narrated and you found out it was Greg afterwards. If anyone's IGN fans out there, Damon Hatfield and Greg Miller are great, great guys over there. I'm big fans of theirs. Listen to the uh, podcasts. If uh, anyone listens to Scoop or Beyond out there, then uh, know that I am a fan. I'm not sure if we have any IGN fans over at Fire UK, but uh, I'm a big fan of theirs. I used to watch a lot more game trailers, but I feel like uh, game trailers has kind of become a lot quieter uh, for some of the content that I like, and I quite kind of like reading a lot of gaming content, uh, so especially reviews and updates. So that's why I read a lot of things like IGN and Kotaku. And uh, yeah, it's interesting. We were on Kotaku once upon a time, shockingly enough. Our train station video was posted over there. So I think we uh, the water's come across a little bit here, so we'll just uh, flood that up, and if we have a little look. This is our little guy bringing back the uh, repel water. There's my orb look floating in the background. That must be scary. Be those guys. And uh, we'll a little zoom in. He's got this uh, cool little well, she. He's got this cool little thing floating above her. And there we go. We now have the power to repel water back at our uh, home base, so to say. And uh, if you quickly notice. The water levels are kind of moving quite frantically. And uh, yeah, you can kind of see the water starting to move a lot more frantically. And on top of that, the waves are picking up, the screen's starting to shake, and there we go. The tsunami's coming in. And. Uh, yeah, this looks pretty damn scary and pretty damn impressive, I must say, with the water uh, physics that these guys have implemented in From Dust. So here we go, you can see it is raging towards our village. This huge wall of uh, water. I was going to say tectonic water, but really it's just water that's caused uh, from the collision of two tectonic plates. Usually, that's what a tsunami is. And, uh,. Here we go. Soon, oh, if people want me to clarify, if you don't know what tsunami is made by, this is a strange conversation. Uh, you can get tsunamis just created by tectonic earth plates on the same plate rather than two separate plates. But usually, the bigger ones are caused by two separate uh, plates rubbing together. And yes, you can get earthquakes that are caused by two plates uh, pressing together. Sometimes it's to do with pressure and things like that. 
That is my geography degree coming back to uh, teach me things there, isn't it? For me to spread the word of people who, do, who are a little bit, you know, they don't know too much about the natural elements of the world. But there you go. And obviously, because you can see now, after my geography lesson to the Fire UK fans, we are watching the water reside and the village is safe. So, yeah. But there is another place we've got to head over to. You can see the water still carrying over here. And is that one of my men? What is happening? What are you doing? Oh. Are you okay there, friend? Oh, jeez. Well, we're going to make it all the way over here. So maybe you want to head there first, as you got swept all the way over here for some reason. Um, so I think the next thing we better do is build up that sandbank again, which was destroyed in our um, in the tsunami. So let's uh, let's build this up again. The water levels are just still kind of high, but we need to kind of hurry up with this because things are gonna get crazy pretty quickly. Uh, we've got five minutes to do this, so I mean that's another element the game adds, which I really like, which is the element of time and you don't have a lot of it to do a lot of things. But the AI can be a little bit stupid like this. What if this water level just slightly rose and then flooded back down again? Bad things would happen, that's what. Now I don't particularly wish for them to go that way, so I'm going to actually build up the sand elsewhere and show you guys what happens if I, don't, I basically don't want the AI to go a certain direction. So we'll try this over here. See, they're, they're shouting now. But... I don't want them to go that way. I want them to go up this way. So I want them to take this road up here and then take over here. Oh my god, it's so weird with the camera controls. Um, it feels very difficult to do what you want to do at times. So here we go. We'll pick up uh, some uh, sand here and plonk it down. That should settle out and uh, kind of move the water down this way. And uh, it'll actually cause a lot more current to go that way. So... so I think these guys are going to head up and actually take my advice, which is good. I'm going to take some more sand from up here and uh, make sure this sandbank here has got a lot more sand on it than pushes the water back. Now, with the water physics of this game, it will start rerouting itself. As you can see here, it pretty much flooded all of the land here and has raised this water level down here. But it should be okay. It should be okay. As uh, we've got some of the guys running along now. I don't know what he's doing all the way down there, but... You know, as you guys can see, it's a very, very pretty game. Um, link in the description below to the Steam store page as well as the developer's website if you want to know more about From Dust. Um, what's what's he doing? What does he want? What does he what does he want? He wants up, basically. There you go. You can have up. Maybe I should soup up this water here. It would seem that the water has started to flood over again and has flooded all of the men down. Brilliant. So this is why we call it Matt Sucks at Games. Because I clearly do. Okay. Let's move this up here. If you guys have noticed, I've tried to make this a little bit more of an informative video for people because there is a lot of talk on the internet at the moment about the state of this game and how it's just a crappy little console port and things like that. And I wanted to show that it's a little bit more than that. I mean, it's worth buying on Steam. I really do believe that. I wouldn't say it, and I wouldn't tell you guys that if I didn't believe that. So, And uh, there we go. We have just cultivated this uh, this here. Now, I can't remember if the repel water thing affects all villages. Um, it might do. If it does, it means this village will be safe too. Uh, building a village on the totem has opened up the passage, maybe we depart. Absorb the earth around the lake. There we go. That's where we've got to get to, which is kind of a flooded area in its well, in in itself, I should say. So, here we go. I mean, I think the first thing to do is try to get this water out of here. So I'm actually going to absorb this here, and I'm going to build it all up over here, and we can use this a little later on. You can release everything contained in the earth by pressing them both at the same time. Really? So if I did that. Oh wow, I did not know that. So, having half the territory covered in palms revealed a new story 
uh, for the tribe. That's cool. So we guess we got our vegetation up here. You can see in the bottom left. Oh, that's really cool. I like that you can just kind of... So you can collect everything up here, all the earth that we, we want to collect up. And then just press right click and then left click. And it drops it all. That's really cool. Alright, so I'm basically trying to lower the, the water here from up here. And uh, I'm going to start dropping it down here. And uh, let's keep doing that. And there we go. I mean, it's, that's a very cool technique to be able to do that. Um, but clearly, the water is not really residing or moving anywhere. So we only have a minute left as well. So I am going to block this tough area up here. And I'm going to left click. Then right left. And there we go. See, it's kind of difficult to actually get this game to do what you want it to do in terms of time-wise because you're kind of rushing and you're like you're kind of being very impatient and like very worried trying to get things to happen but I wouldn't recommend trying to send your men off from the villages especially on this mission until you've got uh, this very much sorted out because the water is pretty difficult to get rid of up here um, I like that you can. That's a. That's. A, I didn't know if you could do that on the Xbox version. It's definitely something I did not. I mustn't have been reading. I guess maybe you can right trigger, left trigger, or something like that. Um, but I like how you can just dispose of it all at once. Uh, it's very useful. As you can see, the world is becoming very, very cloudy again, and we've got eight seconds until a second tsunami hits. So we better hurry up with this. And. There we go. And here it is. It's starting to affect the area already. We'll go over and take a look. Here it is coming in. You can see this this place is gonna be fine. It's gonna be fine. It's basically irradiating a shield of repelling water. But uh let's hope this place uh, can keep up the same. As I'm gonna continue working on over here as this happens. See. Right, I'm going to need to basically absorb as much as I possibly can and just start dumping it in the water here. I think the tsunami has basically stopped rolling in now, but it's just the effects of the raised water that we have yet to be able to subside. As you can see, it is still rolling in pretty heavily. Water is not the fastest thing, but it is definitely a powerful thing. But in later levels, you come across things like volcanoes, which are absolutely insane to deal with. So, But I do recommend this game to anyone who likes uh, godlike games, or people who just like games, because it's very, very fun. And I mean, it is a pleasure to play a game like this. It's very, very good. As you can see, I'm trying to build up this sand bank as quickly as possible here. It's probably going to be destroyed right now. Um, trying to make sure it doesn't destroy too much. And uh, there we go. The village survived. And it would seem we're good to go. So let's press space up here and send the men across. The water is pretty much uh, subsided down here. The music's kicking in. It's basically, it knows that this is the last section now. As we move our men across to uh, the last part. Well guys, this has been uh, been very fun. I've, I really enjoyed this game. It's, it's got a lot of character and uh, it has a lot of unique elements to it. It, even had a le it has a level where it's a desert, and you have to find springs of water to actually survive and uh, create certain areas. And there's some areas where you have to redirect the water, and some areas where you literally have to like completely lower areas of water to actually res get certain items and get to the the end and things like that. So make sure you check out our channel for Minecraft videos, such as Minecraft creations and our time lapse videos, and things like um, 
me playing Insanely Twisted Shadow Planet, and starting very soon, me and Phil will be playing Doom 3. So yeah, thank you guys. Um, if you didn't hear that right at the end there, I did say me and Phil have played Doom 3. It was a lot of fun. I can't wait to show that, showing you guys the, the episodes of that. It's uh, you, it's weird to go back to a game that was uh, such a long time ago. It came out, it's about seven years old now. So, uh, so yeah, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.